let's get started. Uh, today we are going to continue uh, our discussion about the admixtures. Uh, last time uh, we explained the air entrainers. We say that we used the air entrainer in uh, a freezing zone uh, where uh, freezing and, and, and doing is expected. Uh, it's recommended to use air entrainer because through the air entrainer uh, you are going to uh, uh, have like a relief system when the water is going to convert uh, to an ice. Uh, also, we uh, explain the water reducers. We say that uh, in order to improve the workability of the uh, concrete, uh, we are going to add water beyond the hydration uh, requirement. And if we are going to add water to improve the workability, the strength will go down. So using the uh, water reducers uh, is going to help me to improve the workability without, without adding more water, which means that the strength is not going to be affected. Also, we talk about the retarders. We use the retarders in order to delay the initial time, uh, initial set time of the concrete. Sometimes you need to delay the initial time uh, for special uh, finishes, or if we are going to have a delay uh, uh, in order to deliver the concrete from the uh, concrete plant to the job site. Also, we explain the hydration controller admixtures. Uh, this one uh, uh, consists of two. Uh, uh, steps. Step number one, we are going to use the stabilizer. Through the stabilizer, we are going to stop the hydration process up to 72 hours. While the activator, we are going to activate the hydration process again. And this it could be useful in case of emergency. Let's say that uh, an accident uh, took place at your job site and you need, for example, one day in order to fix your problem. In this case, in this case, uh, the best solution for you is to use the hydration controller admixture. You are going to stop the hydration process totally. Then after you finish from your uh, your accident, then you are going to use the uh, activator in order to activate the hydration process again. Uh, uh, today we are going to talk about the accelerators and also we're going to talk about specialty admixtures. So let's talk about the accelerators. So accelerators are used to develop early strength of concrete at a faster rate than, uh, than that developed in normal concrete. So uh, early strength, it means that the strength in the first three days. So in the first three days, if you are going to use the accelerators, the, the value of the strength is going to be more than uh, the concrete developed in a normal concrete. Okay, which means that uh, I'm going to uh, uh, finish my uh, structure uh, as quickly as possible. But you need to remember that the ultimate strength, for example, let's say that the strength after one year, if you are going to use accelerators and with a normal concrete, the ultimate strength is going to be the same. So after a very long time, the strength uh, using the accelerators and the normal uh, concrete is going to be the same. So you need to understand this. The ultimate strength, however, of high L strength concrete is about the same as that of normal concrete. The only difference is about the early strength. So why we use accelerators? We use accelerators first to reduce the amount of time before finishing operation begun, also in order to reduce curing time and also to increase rate of strength gain. So the most used uh, accelerator is the calcium chloride. Uh, through the calcium chloride, both initial and final set times are reduced with the calcium chloride. In order to have a sense for this, let's uh, say that the initial, uh, the initial set time of three hours, if you have a concrete with the initial time of three hours, this can be reduced to be 1.5 hours by adding an amount of calcium chloride equal to 1% of the cement weight. So if I'm going to add calcium chloride, which is an uh, accelerator, uh, by 1% of the uh, cement weight, the time is going to uh, uh, reduce to half. Instead of three hours, you are going to have 1.5 hours. And if you use 2% uh, uh, of the cement weight, if you are going to use calcium chloride, 2% of the cement weight, the initial time is going to be one hour. Instead of three hours, you are going to have one hours. 
So here I'm going to give you typical uh, value for the f final set times. So let's say that you have a concrete, normal concrete without accelerators. The final set time is six hours. Okay. Then if you are going to use calcium chloride with 1% of the cement weight, the, uh, uh, the final time is going to be three hours. If you are going to use 2%, the time is going to, is going to be two hours. And so on. Okay, so uh, uh, to sum up, using accelerators is going to help me to increase the uh, rate of strength gain, especially at the first uh, three days. And that is going to be useful if you want to remove the firm as soon as possible. You want to put the structure into service as quickly as possible. But we have recommendation against using the calcium chloride, not the accelerators in itself but the calcium chloride. So the PCA, the Portland Cement Association, recommends against using calcium chloride under the following conditions. So the PCA, it says that do not use the calcium chloride if you have one of these four conditions. The first condition, if you are going to use uh, pre-stressed concrete, do not use calcium chloride. If your concrete is in contact with water or soil containing sulfate, do not use calcium chloride. If your concrete is placed during hot weather, also do not use calcium chloride. If you are going to use mass application of concrete, again, do not use calcium chloride. Okay? So according to the PCA, do not use calcium chloride under those conditions. Okay. Since we have conditions that where we, we is not recommended to use calcium chloride, we have options, alternatives. So we have several alternatives to the, use, to the use of calcium chloride are available. So if you cannot use calcium chloride, you can use uh, cement type 3. Remember, cement type 3, high air strength. Cement type 3 is going to uh, give you air strength. So instead of calcium chloride, you can use cement type 3. Also, you can increase the cement content. If you are going to increase the cement content, the hydration process is going to be faster. Also, you can cure at a higher temperature. The curing process, uh, you are going to provide uh, water and moisture, moisture and a certain temperature so that the uh, hydration process is going to continue. If you are going to increase the temperature, the curing process is going to be higher, which means that the uh, rate of strength gain is going to be higher as well. Also, we have non-calcium chloride accelerators. We have accelerators uh, which do not include calcium chloride. You can use those one. But if you have these cases, do not use calcium chloride. Finally, we are going to talk about supplementary cementitious materials. We know that the, uh, in order to produce concrete, we say that we are going to uh, put the concrete in the, the clean. And in the clean, the temperature is more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. And as a result, uh, a great amount of CO2, calcium uh, oxide, is going to be released to the environment. And that is bad for the environment. So we are going to replace a part of the cement with supplementary cementitious material. So what does it mean? It means that I have uh, byproducts of other industry. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, the, in, in the process of making iron, I have byproducts, which is uh, 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 materials uh, uh, we do not use. We are going to throw it away. It's a, a byproduct. We are going to use those byproducts as supplementary cementitious admixtures because those byproducts they have cementitious uh, properties. So these materials have been used to improve some properties of concrete and to reduce the problem of discarding them. And instead of throw those material away, I'm going to uh, use them in order to, to, to uh, uh, replace a part of the concrete. And since these materials are cementitious, they can be used as partial replacement for Portland cement. Those materials, those uh, byproducts, they have uh, uh, cementitious uh, properties. 
so we we can use them uh, as a, a partial replacement for portland cement i'm not going to replace the whole cement 100 percent i'm going to replace a part of the cement and these supplementary uh, cementitious material include fly ash we have ground granulated blast furnace slag and we have silica fume and we have some natural portland we have the, well, let's start with the fly ash. The fly ash is the most commonly used bozilant in CE structure, in civil engineering structure. And the fly ash is a byproduct of the uh, coal industry, especially in the uh, power station. So in order to run a power station, you are going to get a uh, byproduct, which is fly ash. And the fly ash, it has cementitious properties. So I'm going to replace a part of the cement with the fly ash. Also, we have the slag cement. The slag cement uh, is a ground granulated blast furnace slag. We can call it slag uh, cement. And those made from iron blast furnace slag. We use the blast furnace in order to produce iron. Later on, when we are going to talk about the iron uh, production, we are going to show you we are going to use the blast, uh, the blast furnace. It's like a big, big oven. And through that process, you are going to get byproduct. And that byproduct, uh, 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 byproduct is the slag. Again, we used the, the slag as a cementitious material in the concrete. Finally, we have the silica fume. Also, uh, silica fume is byproduct. In the production of silicon metal or uh, ferro-silicon alloys. And the silica fume, through the uh, silica fume, we are not going only to replace a part of the cement, but also we can increase the strength and the durability. So if you are going to use the silica fume as a replacement of the cement, let's say 10%, 20% of the cement, then the strength is going to be increased and the durability is going to be improved. And also the silica fume is going to reduce the concrete corrosion induced by the icing or marine salts. So silica fume is uh, good for the concrete. The natural porcelain in general is not cementitious. It doesn't have any cementitious properties. But they react with calcium hydroxide to form compound possess, uh, possessing cementitious properties. So what is the calcium hydroxide? We know that in order for the concrete to act like a, a binder, the concrete should react with the water. So the concrete is going to react for the water, and then the result you are going to, to, to form calcium silicate hydrate. It's a gel. That gel is re responsible for the strength and for binding the aggregates together. I have secondary product, with the, which is the calcium hydroxide. The ha calcium hydroxide is not going to help me uh, in order to uh, improve the strength. But that byproduct uh, or the secondary product, which is calcium hydroxide, is going to react with the natural bosonin because the natural bosonin does not have cementitious properties. And when the natural bosonin react with calcium hydroxide, they are going to give us cementitious uh, uh, products. They are going to produce uh, calcium silicate hydrates again. And that is going to uh, uh, improve the uh, uh, performance of the concrete. So nowadays, we are going to use sub uh, supplementary cementitious material in our concrete. So nowadays, every concrete, most of the concrete nowadays, is going to produce using this uh, supplementary cementitious material. Because like I, I said here, if you are going to use silica fume, you are not going, you are not going only to uh, replace a part of the concrete. You are not going only to uh, replace a part of the cement, but also you are going to increase the strength and the durability. And uh, in the last five years or six years, we have new supplementary cementitious material, which is uh, uh, nano silica. Nano silica nowadays is under investigation. Most of the researchers, are, they are going uh, they uh, uh, they use uh, the nanosilica in order to understand its behavior. 
and also the nano silica improve the strength and the durability and also is going to uh, improve the uh, internal structure of the concrete and also in, in uh, improve the uh, durability for the concrete so uh, i'm going to stop here if you have any uh, questions uh, regarding uh, this class or this lecture please uh, ask me